The U.S. government has been auctioning off Bitcoin. What? Yes, the U.S. government has had a lot of Bitcoin and they continue to auction it off. Now, what the report is coming in is that the U.S. government has been seizing Bitcoin in various operations and alongside other assets. So this is not just the government going in and seizing Bitcoin. What happens is they go in and they seize a person's assets, usually during a criminal uh, investigation or something like that, and they happen to have some Bitcoin. Now, the three main junctures in the flow of crypto through the criminal justice system is basically first phase. There is search and seizure. The second is that there's a liquidation of rated crypto. And the third is deployment of the proceeds from those crypto sales. So that's kind of the three steps here of what actually occurs. We have a quote from Jared Koopman, the director of cybercrime unit at the IRS. He says, it could be 10 boats, 12 cars, and then one of the lots is X number of Bitcoin being auctioned. So basically what happens is that through the government, one of the either law enforcement agencies, the IRS, et cetera, there's some sort of seizure of assets inside those assets ends up being Bitcoin. And then ultimately what they do is they turn around and they auction them off. So how much exactly has actually been seized? In the fiscal year of 2019, they had about $700,000 worth of crypto seizures. In 2020, it was up to $137 million. They went from 700K to 137 million. And so far in 2021, they're at $1.2 billion. Those are big boy and big girl numbers. 700K to 137 million to $1.2 billion. Absolutely going parabolic and not necessarily for a good reason. And so Jared then goes on and says that it's not about timing the market. It's actually the exact opposite. You basically get in line to auction it off. We don't ever want to flood the market with a tremendous amount, which then could have an effect on the pricing component. And so quite literally, we have the director of cybercrime at the IRS saying that they don't want to time the market. And they also don't want to sell all the Bitcoin in bulk that would crash the price. They're trying to be thoughtful, but this is pretty crazy that they've got so much crypto that that has been seized. And in July, the U.S. Marshal Service, they hired Anchorage Digital as their custodian to help custody the cryptocurrency that was seized or forfeited in various criminal cases. Hardware wallets are also used to secure the seized crypto. And Jared said, we maintain private keys only in headquarters so that it can't be tampered with. It is pretty crazy to think of the U.S. government having hardware wallets actually maintaining private keys and then holding on to Bitcoin or other cryptocurrencies until they go ahead and they actually auction that stuff off. And so ultimately, the crypto that's traced and seized accounts for roughly 60 to 70 percent of the Treasury forfeiture fund, making it the largest individual contributor inside of the U.S. government. Are we surprised that they are seizing so much of this and auctioning it off? Or is this, sub, you know, just like any other asset, whether it's cars, houses or, or other types of investment? I think they're treating it like any other asset. I'm not surprised that they have almost doubled, tripled, like always increased year by year since 2018 of the amount that they've seized because people just, there's bad actors in every single asset, right? There, there's bad actors that use cars. They go ahead and seize them and then they go ahead and auction them off to the public. Um, but I think it's, it is interesting that they don't hold it. Um, it's kind of just makes sense to hold it, to be honest, if you look at the appreciation over the last 12 years of Bitcoin. And then also I read a quote um, that they were talking about how they don't try and time the market, but they don't dump all their Bitcoin at one time, right? Or other cryptocurrencies at one time because it can, it can affect the price, right? I don't want my government trading on uh, certain assets like this, but it's not surprising that they do this at all. The auctions, look, tell me where to go because I'm sure, I'm sure you can get a lot of Bitcoin for, for a good price. One of the pieces that uh, is not surprising is that they're forfeiting the assets, right? So that is uh, just like they forfeit any other asset. What I am surprised by is the fact that they are uh, auctioning, it, auctioning it off and they've been doing this for a long time and they haven't chosen yet to hold the assets uh, on their balance sheet. There may be rules that preclude them from doing that, um, but I think that's one piece. The second is that if they were able to hold it, that would have uh, pervasive uh, incentives, right? If all of a sudden the government was incentivized to seize people's assets and then hold on to them, I don't think we want to live in that world. So there's a, a, a delicate balance between hindsight being 2020 and it might obviously uh, the Bitcoin that they seized rather than having auctioned it off to Tim Draper or anybody else, they should have held on to it. That's obvious. But 
The opposite is also true, which is I don't think as private citizens, we want the government, law enforcement uh, or other types of regulatory bodies to actually have the incentive to seize assets and hold them for long periods of time. Right. Then all of a sudden you get in this weird world where it becomes a zero sum game. And so uh, really what I think is uh, kind of the most interesting piece of this is that an asset that most people say like, oh, I hold the private keys. Oh, I have sovereignty. Uh, the government's able to to obviously seize. My guess is that majority, if not all of those seizures are coming because people are holding the assets on uh, exchanges. It's not because they have their private keys and, and they show up uh, and get it. Instead, what's happening is it's on uh, kind of a, a regulated exchange. The exchange gets told, hey, there's some sort of criminal investigation. There's some sort of uh, enforcement action. We want you to go ahead, freeze those assets, give them to us. We're going to seize them. And then we're going to go ahead and we're going to auction it off. So there's a lot of complexity here, but uh, I'm just blown away. 700K to 137 million to now over a billion dollars. 700K to over a billion dollars in you know essentially two years. That's big time growth. I'll be interested to see when the US government actually starts to earn yield on the Bitcoin that they're holding in nah, between the time that they seize it and the time that they auction it off. I don't think they're going to do that. Why you not? think they're going to do that? Why would they not do it? Because I, don't, I think they take the position that they're not in the investment game. Yeah, well, they should be. <laughs> we're, 20, I mean, we're $28 trillion in debt. They should be in the investment game. I mean, you're not wrong on that. <laughs> you Do you think that they could- we're bleeding money as a nation. Yeah, well, uh, we don't have money. We're, we're broke. We're, we're printing it as yeah, we speak. Well, we, we just can create money, so we don't need, actually need to make any <laughs> revenue. Like, why become an investor when you could just print money? Imag imagine how much investing you would do if you could just go in your bank account and just edit the number in there every day. <laughs> be pretty nice. Yeah, well, I just would not invest. <laughs> right, right. Why do I need to be an investor? I can just edit the number. Like, I don't need to be an investor. Yeah. Well, we'll see what they do over time. They just did Anchorage Digital, I think it was, that they're going to start holding some of their Bitcoin as well. And then they obviously, they hold it on a hardware wallet, which is- That's right, why. Yeah, that's why. Off-chain, can't move it around as easily. What are you, auction off a USB stick? At all? You're like, all right, this one's got X probably. amount of Bitcoin. That's probably what they do, unfortunately. But uh, the government auctions are crazy to begin with. And to think that they're auctioning off cryptocurrency assets. I mean, what if they- are they seizing stocks and auctioning those off as well? Uh, they probably are either liquidating or auctioning. They yeah, probably, they yeah, probably well, liquidate it though. They probably, I would be surprised if they auction off all the stocks. That they I don't seize. know what they do with stocks. That'd be pretty crazy. If they were like, yo, hey, come buy Amazon stock. 90 cents on the dollar, 90 cents on the dollar. Going yeah. once, going once, going They'll twice. They'll sell that at a discount as well. Yeah. Well, or, or maybe people will pay a premium. Why would someone pay a premium? Like, let's for say that they, they, let's just say they seized El Chapo's Amazon stock. We Would you pay a premium for, uh, to say, I own Amazon stock, but I don't just own any Amazon stock. I own El Chapo's Amazon stock. I would not, stock. but I bet some people would. Somebody out yeah. there would. Right? <laughs> like, like, you mean, you get this like weird world where like, uh, you can make an argument. Yeah, sure. It should be discounted, right? Uh, uh, or at fair market value. But there are people out there who, depending on who it is, would absolutely pay more from it.